I'm Timothy Harvier, and I work uh, in the at, at Red Hat in the Chorus team, mostly on Federal Chorus, but I do a lot of work also on other RPM OS3 based system, such as Fedora Silver Blue. And today we're here to talk about, of course, Fedora Kinoite, which is another RPM 3 based uh, system uh, based on Fedora uh, as well. All right, so let's get started. So, yeah, this works. So we have a fairly packed agenda, uh, and we'll see all, all that uh, very shortly. So, first, like quick, quick basic things. So the, what, what's Fedora Kinoite? Well, Fedora Kinoite, Fedora Kinoite is Fedora. So that's like the, the main important things to remember. And um, we are attached to the KDE Seek. We built from 100% Fedora RPM packages. So there's basically no changes. It's like you get Fedora packages that lack, just like they are in the regular distribution. So what's the difference is that we we are calling also we are calling Fedora Connect an immutable desktop operating system. So it's not immutable in the sense that you cannot change it, but in that you can control how it gets changed and how things change in it. Uh, it's featuring the KDE Plasma desktop. And uh, the first release will be, of course, for Fedora 35, which is coming up uh, in, in a couple of months. All right, so, well, I probably won't bother though, but you mentioned about why we chose Fedora for that, because we hear all here for Fedora, so uh, it's not really, uh, not really news here, but there's a lot of great stuff in Fedora. We are up to date, we are upstream first, we follow all the latest upstream uh, release, and we do also set for KDE packaging in Fedora, so which this makes things great to use Fedora space for this project. All right, so what makes Fedora Kinoid actually different? Well, we based on RPM OS3 to manage the system. That's like the basics. You get uh, your system working as a consistent image and not as a collection of packages that may or may not work together. Uh, the second one, uh, the second point is that we're using flat packs to manage applications. So you get most of all of your applications using flat packs. You can update them on their own and, and install uh, them as you go. And finally, we use Spotman to manage containers, all the development tools, and things you might need uh, on top of the system. So you might have noticed that we're a really close sibling of Fedora Silverblue, uh, which is also an RPM tree based desktop uh, with the GNOME desktop environment. All right, so what does it look like? Well, uh, essentially it just look like Fedora because uh, Fedora Kinoite is just Fedora. It's just not a brand with a little twist on it, but essentially the look is basically the same. Instead, we just have Kinoite instead of of being named uh, uh, Fedora Linux. Uh, so there's not much difference. We still have use Discover to install applications using Flatpak, and you get the classic KDE desktop. All right, so the status of this project right now is we're, we're in full development pro in progress. Uh, we're planned for, we've been accepted as change for Fedora 35. Uh, so we'll be there when Fedora, Fedora 35 gets released. Uh, and uh, right now it's it's in progress. You get you can get official development boots uh, that are now available in Rawhide. Uh, you can follow the links over there to to to, to install them. Uh, or if you don't feel like using development boots Rawhide for your day to day use cases, you can use the, an, an official boot that I'm currently maintaining for Fedora. Uh, they are based on Fedora 34 packages. Uh, so it's unofficial, but it's still 100% Fedora RPMs. Uh, essentially, the main difference is that they're not signed by Fedora Infra. It's just signed by my personal GPG key, but that's mostly the only difference. Well, you still have to trust me that I, I built them only from Fedora RPMs, but essentially, it's what I do. All right, so what's the goal of this? Like, why do we even bother creating a new edition, new variant of Fedora? Uh, to, to just to, to, we are just not doing that for, for the sake of doing it. It's, it's why are we doing that? Uh, so the main, main idea here is we want to make sure that the desktop experience is great for our users first. So what, well, but this, uh, we get this by using RPM3. So RPM3 gives us a really nice uh, update experience for the base system because the whole system is shipped as a single consistent image. So when you do an update, you either 
update the whole system or not at all. And you do that offline in a sense. So you get the new version and you reboot to a new version. Uh, the updates are atomic, you get rollbacks, you can go back if anything happens. And so this makes like the day-to-day -day experience of updating your system really great. The second thing that is great with, with that is using flatbacks makes installing and updating application really easy. So this decouples the updates of the applications from the updates of the system. So when you get an update for Firefox or something else, uh, you can get that directly. You don't have to wait for the system update or anything. You, you can update each application independently. You can even roll back them if you want. Uh, and uh, you don't even have to update them if you want to keep a specific version. Uh, and it doesn't matter which version of the system you're running, each application is independent. Uh, and it also opens up a really great uh, opportunity to access a lot of applications. So I'll see Flathub has a lot of applications available as Flatbacks for Linux. And uh, of course, you'll still have the Flatbacks, which are provided by Fedora, which is full open source applications. And finally, the latest piece uh, for the great desktop experience for users is the Toolbox, which is a common line tool which basically brings all classic Fedora packages directly to your desktop, just like you would have. So even if an app is not available as a flat pack, you can just like install it in a toolbox and you get it. And it's just working almost as if it was already installed on the system. All right, so that's for user. And then you get, all right, we're, we're all users first, and then you try and do things more. So usually you find a bug or something, or you want to test a new version of the applications, or you want to, try the new version of GD Plasma because you think, hey, this feature is kind of cool. So um, maybe I want to try it. So the idea is, yeah, we want to be there for testers, early adopters of technologies, but I want to be like on the very front of the, of the development thing of what's happening. And this is made much easier thanks to RPM industry because you're not giving up stability uh, for early version testing because you can always go back to a non boot version if, if, if you know, if, if you, for example, find a bug. So the idea is that you try the version, try the new version. And once you're done, you just go back to the stable version and it's just easier that you don't have to reinstall everything. Uh, it's the same thing with splat packs. Splat packs, you can install several versions of a flat pack at once. So you can have a testing version of a flat pack installed as, as well uh, as the same time as the stable version, which makes it really easy to test to test a new version of an application without like sacrificing your stability, your day-to-day -day work on the stable flat pack. Um, yeah, you can try nightly different flat packs. You can try nightly versions of the system. Uh, and you will have the stable version as fallback. And all of that is installed at the same time system. Uh, and the last piece, which I love, is uh, using PRs, building flat packs from PRs. So if you get like specific bugs, fix or something, you can uh, you can use, uh, for example, this GitHub action which builds which build, uh, uh, an application flat pack for your application from a PR and give that as an option to your user. So they can go ahead and like try if this new version of the flat pack of the application actually fixes the bug that they're having. And if it does, then you're confident that like merging the code will actually fix the bug. And this is like really nice user experience because for testers, they don't have to build the code. They don't have to understand everything. They just like install the new version of the app, test it directly. And when they report the feedback, you feel like real good confidence that the bugs are actually fixed. So that's that's great. And finally, we want to make sure that it's also a great experience for developers. So this is all enabled again by RPM history in Flatpak because RPM history enables you control chain, what you call control chain. So that's like the thing about the immutable desktop. It's not immutable that you cannot change it. it you control or you change it. So essentially the idea is that you can basically override any pack action system using your industry and it will tell you. So it will tell you what has changed in the system. Uh, and you can go back to the previous version to the stable version of, the, of what you had. So that's like the base, the, the nice thing to make. This is like by default, you will just go back to the stable version, to the version that work. And, but you can always try and change things to see if, uh, if, if you want. Uh, the yeah the, the easy version, easiest way 
to go back is always to reboot. So you install some development packages, things broke, okay, you just reboot, you go back to the version that is stable. For flat packs, the benefit comes with the way flat packs work in the sense that you've got everything included into flat packs, the build environments and the frameworks, uh, everything, the libraries, you can have anything you want and uh, you don't really have any restriction or compatibility issues with what's already included on the system. So essentially you can use whatever you want, whatever you need uh, for your applications without uh, strong constraints. Oops. Yeah. So, all right. So that's what we want to do, but uh, we, we're getting there with Fedora, right? Uh, uh, but for all that work, uh, well, you also need applications to live on the system. Uh, and so let's take a look at where are actually right now, where we can find KD applications to install on Fedora. Right? Well, the first thing is uh, right now, the flat packs in Fedora are still in progress. So there's a good collection, good selection uh, of uh, KD application already. Well, most of the KD apps are available as RPMs, but they are not yet available as flat packs. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, if you want to get uh, KD applications, you can get them from FlatHub. Uh, we are progressively packaging a lot of them uh, in FlatHub. And uh, hopefully uh, at some point before the, the Fedora certified release, we'll have uh, Fedora, official Fedora flat pack packages for KD apps. Uh, they are also a good selection of Neon KD uh, apps already available as flat packs from Fedora. And of course, there are a lot of them uh, on, on FlatHub too. Um, yeah, so the, the, the main difference between the apps that you will get from FlatHub and the apps from Fedora uh, is that maybe they're not necessarily the same version, uh, but the main difference is that if you get them from Fedora, you will have the full guarantee that it's fully included on the open source software. Whereas from FlatHub, you don't really have that guarantee because you can have external proprietary software uh, added in certain cases, or some restricted software, such as media codecs and things like that. So yeah, if you look uh, at the flatback from FlatHub's, uh, yeah, we've got a quickly expanding list of key applications. Uh, we're working closely with upstream uh, every time to make sure that when we fix something, it gets upstream, so it gets there for everybody. Uh, and uh, and that GD application works well by default in Flatback. So it's a work in progress. We're doing that progressively, fixing applications as we go, as we try. Uh, there's a lot of easy and small tasks, tasks for beginners to get in involved uh, if you're interested. So if you're interested in packaging or helping us uh, with fixing some little small bugs in KDE applications or adding some features. Uh, it's a really great way to get started because packaging, once you've got like, the basics about Flutter packaging, it's really easy to get started and uh, and repackage KDE applications, much easier than classic development outside of Flatback. Uh, yeah, so if you take a look at Hubs and Flathub, you get some of them of the classic ones, some proprietary ones. Uh, a lot of popular applications are there. Uh, and uh, if you want to focus on only the KDE applications which are there, you can search for all of KDE and you will get, will get only the KDE apps that are already available in Flathub. All right, uh, so yeah, the next part of this presentation is about what we are going to do next. So with Federal Common Rights, where we, where we want to go uh, and, and in, in the future, in the coming months, well, once we've released Federal Certified, uh, what we will be doing uh, on top of that. Uh, well, the idea is that we want uh, to be the best platform to try the next version. So the next version of what? Next version of the Plasma desktop. So of course, on Fedora, you usually we usually push the next uh, the, the current release of the Plasma desktop, uh, but it's not always easy to try the next version. So let's say we the Plasma KD Plasma release the new beta version. Uh, unless you're running raw hide, it's not always easy. With Kinoite, we'll make try we'll try and make available some of the ways to try and run latest data beta plasma releases uh, on top of stable uh, the stable base of Fedora uh, to be able to like, try a new version of this up without compromising all the stability of the system. And at the same time, 
we also want to make sure that the nightly version of Kitty applications are easily available uh, for uh, for you to consume uh, at the same time as you can get uh, the, the classic version of the, of the flashback. So yeah, being able to test both the desktop and the new applications at their release as beta before they get really fully released. Um, so the idea here is that we probably make some different delivery strains. So right now we'll have, uh, on when Fedora certified gets released, we'll have the stable version, of course. So the Fedora certified branch uh, and the Rawhide stream, which is already there uh, for Fedora Kinoid and which we still be there always. But the idea is that maybe at some point we'll have this third stream or another option where you get the, the plasma, beta plasma desktop and the, and the stable Fedora uh, content uh, underneath. Um, yeah, and the last thing that we really want to try and focus on is trying to do the testing before we do releases. Uh, so this happening in Fedora right now is that uh, usually when we the, the, the images are composed, they, they, they are built, and then the testing goes onto it and try and do things to make sure that the images work. And we might want to try and like revert that, build that, do the testing, and then actually make sure we, before we release that everything is fully tested. But yeah, this is like a much bigger piece of work, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, all right, uh, and finally, uh, taking a look uh, here is that we don't have any logo, so uh, we still don't have a logo for 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 Kinoid. Uh, we're still looking for ideas. If you got any ideas, if you got any. Uh, talent in this space, uh, feel free to, to join us. There's an in-progress issue uh, about that and uh, any help here is appreciated. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, you can join us uh, fairly easily. So uh, we hang out in the in, in the Kili with the Kili SIG. So everything is, you know, is attached to the Kili SIG. Uh, and with the issue, you can report issues into the Kili SIGs. We meet fairly regularly on Mondays. Uh, at the 1800 UTC, uh, and yeah, you can easily try either the official booths, which are right now Rohide, until Fedora certified gets released, or the unofficial booths, uh, the stable, which are based on the stable version of Fedora certified right now. And all the links are there. Of course, I'll post the slides, uh, the link to the slides just right, right after that. Okay, so let's have a little quick demo and some time for questions if you have any questions first. All right, so right now I have one question. Thank you for that. Well, you know, I had the same issues as Silverblue, like missing support for easy way of installing copper packages or missing ABRT reporting. Um, yes, probably. So we share a lot of the code between Silverblue and Kinoid. So a lot of common issues uh, are, a lot of those issues are common. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking into that. The installing corporate packages is, yeah, it's a little bit different, but you essentially have to pull out the repo file manually and add that to your system. But apart from that, you can directly install packages. So yeah, it's not a great UX, but uh, it's still fairly easy. Uh, for API reporting, that's something I'm definitely looking into how and try and figure that at some point. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now we're not great on this front. Uh, we have to, to work on that. All right, second question I have is do you daily drive can I? And yes, I do. So I'll just show that to you. Uh, the idea is that right now I'm not really driving the official uh, release version because it's Rawhide, it's a little bit too soon. Uh, still, we haven't even branched with R35, so uh, it's like reasonably working, but it's not fully, uh, fully, fully there yet. Um, but I'm driving the unofficial version, so I'll just tell that to you right now. Is that so? Let's just see if you can. In chat, if you see my screen correctly, hopefully. I'll just have to switch. Yeah, seems like this is working. Yeah, great, thank you. All right, so here's like the current version that I'm running, which is so still in official builds, but it is it is still 
Pinot in a sense, because it's still Fedora packages. It's Fedora 34 packages. Uh, it's an official boots from, uh, from which are hosted by server. Uh, yeah. And um, you can see here, I have so Kinoid version. It is the latest build I made this Monday, this week. And I have some packages of OLAID here on top of it. So I use RPM Fusion, uh, Vim, and et cetera. Uh, yeah. And I have a bunch of flat packs too. So, I don't have, so yeah, you can see from this lead here that I don't really have any KD application. Uh, overlaid on top because essentially all the KDE applications I use, I use them on flat packs. So if you go and list here all the flat pack applications that have installed the system, uh, you can see there's quite a bunch of them. So I've got Spotify, Steam, and everything. And you also have like a lot of KDE applications there, uh, which are the classic ones, which are all uh, unfortunately right now. So they all come from Flat Hub because that's where they are all packaged, mostly. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, what should I show next? Uh, I'm almost at the hour, so I'll just like give a quick try and see if there's another question. Yes, there's another question. If someone wanted to create a federal RPM industry spin with a different desktop environment, like an XQMA something, would they build it on QR? Well, neither. That's a good question. Uh, so essentially the idea is that um, you don't create, uh, so there was supposed to be another session just after this one about specific uses of to create desktop environments based uh, desktop variants uh, of Fedora based on RPM3, but we had to risk it. So uh, this will be for another time. But the base idea is that you, you don't, um, you, you base that on a common set of packages and that's, uh, Mostly done. Let's just like link to the config here, which shows you how it's done. So essentially, the config is here. And uh, yeah, and you essentially the, the common base, which makes an all parameters uh, desktop based on Fedora. And then you add on top the desktop environment that you want. So uh, essentially, Silverblue is adding GNOME on top of that. Uh, Kinoite is adding all the KDE Plasma desktop on top of that. And if you want to make an XFC variant, uh, which is something I've already done and unofficially, it's not an official variant, uh, you can create like, you, you can have this, you take the same base and you add the XFC packages on top of that and you get a full uh, RPM street based XFC desktop. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it works fairly well. So uh, you, you, can, you, you still have the, the unofficial bits about XFC for that uh, in, my, in the same links that I'm, I'm making here first. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, Micah, but thanks, but not thanks in a sense, because I don't like to say that we removed uh, GNOME and had key, because since that's not really what we're doing, we're not removing GNOME form to make, <laughs> it's all right. We're not removing GNOME to make Kinoid, because we're essentially just using the same base technologies and we share the same packages. It's just that instead of adding GNOME to create Silverview, you had KD to create Kinoid. So yeah, we're not taking away something from Silverview. We're just using the same common set of packages and creating something new. So yeah, it's not, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of true, but like, I don't like the, uh, it feels bad. It's, it's not like we're taking anything from, from, um, from GNOME or Silverview here. It's just another option. Yeah, we need a base, another, yeah, I've created a base image for that, and, but uh, it's not, a, there's not really an option. Another, another option is about like rebasing on top of Fedora Core uh, which is a bigger topic, uh, but uh, we're not there yet and we still have to, to try and make that available. Uh, so yeah, there's no official uh, XFC, uh, uh, so let's like go through the question I have. So Amichki comes from Flatbacks and Holito, is it in the OS3 base? So essentially what we have in the OS3 base commits is like only the core application that you cannot go and live without. So we have had all the KD Plasma desktops, so the, the shell in a sense, uh, and all widgets. And then you get Firefox, the terminal, 
uh, Dolphin and Discover and Arc, the Archive, ma the archive Manager. Because that's like the base things. If you don't have that, it's painful in a sense on desktop. So that's like included in the image by default. Everything else you install via Flatpak. The, the main goal with the Fedora 35 release is that I have just enough Flatpaks uh, built in Fedora so that we can pre-install them. Just like what is done on Silverblue where a lot of the GNOME application are pre-installed in the image uh, by default. And that's the goal here. So having just enough KDE applications so that we can pre-install them. So you have to get the, the calculator, uh, the, I don't know, the music player, uh, thing like that available by default on, on your desktop. So yeah, that's since since the early. Um, no silver blue. I have choices for more stuff than GNOME and KDE. So yeah, this this is like the and will there be a next version of silver blue? This is like where things get tricky. So silver blue is GNOME. So essentially, the silver blue version of uh, it's an RPM suite this based desktop with GNOME. So it's only one thing. There's no XFC silver blue or anything like that. Just like Kinoi. There's no GNOME version of Kino. It doesn't really make sense in, in, in a sense. It's, it's, it's a whole, so you cannot like split it out. But you can create an XFC uh, based RPM mystery desktop. It's still possible. It's just, it, it would just be something different. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird. So if you take a look at the config here, let's just switch share my screen again. Uh, yes, you can install classic RPMs on top of. Uh, Oh, should I should I should I should I share my whole screen? Uh, so if you go, if you use RPMS3, and if you go there, so when you say RPMS3 status, here you've got a list of layer packages. What this means is that essentially what I've done is I've called RPMS3 and I've said install, and I've given hit uh, uh, some packages. So here I can, can for example, set a trace. And if I go ahead and start a trace, it will just create a new deployment and uh, install s trace on the system. So this won't be available right now, but you can reboot into the new version and you get package installed. And there's even a new option right now. If I just come to that, you can go ahead and say, OK, let's do that directly. You can go ahead and apply live, and you will get a trace installed directly on the system. So it takes a while and uh, but you yeah what well, it's, it's going. So maybe we can give it a try before the software. It's going to be the top of the 30 minutes so I'll have to to stop here. Uh, all right. Thank you everyone uh, for coming to the session. Hopefully you get uh, a better view of what Fedora Kinoa is right now. And uh, yeah if you got any questions feel free to reach out to me either on Matrix, on the ERC channels, in the KDSeq, uh, feel free to open tickets, and anything like that, if you want to contribute, uh, you're welcome, of course. All right, thanks everyone.